Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So in this video I'm going to take you through how I've painted a Mark IV tank from Warlord Games. World War I tank, it's the 15th of September when this video is going to launch, which is the anniversary of the first time the tank was used in battle, so quite appropriate and themic. So if you do enjoy what I'm doing, as ever, check me out on Facebook and Instagram at Adam's Hobby Stuff and like, comment and subscribe to YouTube and all that jazz. And let's crack on with the video. We'll go through the build at sort of super speed, a um, good chance to see how the model comes and also I can have a bit of a natter over it. So I've had this tank for quite a while, it's been sat in the pile of opportunity as we'll call it, um, and didn't really have an appropriate time to do it. It's for a project that's kind of on the back burner and I'll get to eventually I'm sure. But I thought, look, coming up to 15th, um, ideal opportunity to do something that fits in with historically what's going on, even if it's not necessarily the kind of projects I'm working on at the moment. So it's a resin and metal kit from Warlord. It's in their bolt action range, although obviously bolt action is World War II generally. Now I picked this up because I was going to use it with my home guard army for my World War II bolt action. Because interestingly, although the Mark IV and then obviously 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. were World War I and post-war, um, they did bring a Mark IV tank back into operational order in World War II. So that tank was a survivor of World War I, it was a Mark IV. Um, called Excellent and it was from HMS Excellent and they kind of renovated it, did it up, got it in running order and the idea was to use it in home defence. But a couple of stories about it and they damaged some vehicles bringing it into the town and, and obviously it never actually happened. Now I kind of thought, what if it did? Um, what if that tank made it to the Home Guard and they used it, you know, to defend Warmington on sea or whatever, um, I'm going to do the bolt action. So that was kind of my idea for picking it up. Um, never particularly got around to doing it but now's a good opportunity. So. Although it is a World War I vehicle, I'm going to try and squeeze it into a bolt action army eventually. So what's the model like to build? Um, like any resin or metal kit, there are going to be some areas of, you know, moulding that aren't quite 100%. And you'll see me as I go through here doing a lot of test fitting of the parts, making sure they go together. You do have a fair chunk of, you know, carving and filing, as you'll see, really to get the parts to fit. And that's something to bear in mind when you're doing a resin and metal kit. It's not so bad though this model, there was no real air bubbles and no holes to fill, um, particularly in the actual casting process, which you can find with a lot of um, resin kits. So actually, not all the work here. And I'm going to whiz through the entire build process at six speed. This probably took me about half an hour, 40 minutes to build. So the swings and roundabouts of buying, particularly a Warlord Games resin and metal kit versus their full plastic kits is much, much quicker build time, but you might have to do a little bit more hobby stuff, you know, to yourself, cut it down, etc. as you're going. So you get swings and roundabouts, but to be honest, a really nice kit. Went together quite quickly and easily, um, just with a couple of those things, like we said before, that you've got to bear in mind when you are building these kits. So back on, I suppose, to what prompted me to do this. So, you know, I've read the history of it um, and actually seen the real life excellent tank at Bovington Tank Museum um, in Dorset. Go to there every kind of couple of years, brilliant place to see it. And that kind of re-inspired my um, thoughts about getting this kit done. So down there in July, uh, saw that, you know, the anniversary of September, saw the actual excellent in uh, the flesh, so to speak, um, down there. And that kind of put that number in my head. So put aside some of the current hobby projects to build this kit up. I'm not really pleased I did. I said, again, it's a lovely kit. Um, the only real um, mold lines or anything difficult on this was more on the rails um, that go through and also on the um, unditching beam that is going to stick onto the back of the rails in a second. Those are the really badly moldy bits and the metal parts. So the resin was actually pretty good um, kind of all in. One little quirk I did notice on the kit, more so when I looked at um, real life pictures of the models and some pictures I'd taken um, down in Bovington, was that the um, gun turrets in the pods on the side the, the the slits that you see down the side which kind of viewing and vision slits are um, mirror images of each other and they shouldn't be I don't believe when you look at the real life pictures because obviously the guns are mounted in the um, pods and they should be um, asymmetrical because obviously the gunner still has to sit on the right hand side the loader and stuff has to sit on the left um, or vice versa whichever end it is on both pods on both sides of the tanks so the vision slits should be on um, the same side on both sides and they're not they've mirrored it so slightly little quirk in the modeling kit there um but then again i might be wrong so there we go i did a, an interesting thing about um these actual tanks in reality is the side pods where the weapons are one of the variant things that makes it different from being a mark four to a mark one as they went through is these pods actually retract slightly into the tank so they can be transported by rail etc so interesting quirks about 
what the marks make as they develop so not a lot of visual difference from the outside between a mark 4 and a mark 1 obviously it's a mark 1 that's the anniversary on the 15th so there we go don't really want this to turn into a historical lecture but you know um, i do have a love of tanks i'm sure we all do that's why we're watching a video on painting a model tank i assume so here we are just doing a bit of green stuff in in some of the gaps here because there were a couple of gaps on the model that were a little over large mostly above um the left pod and i just wanted to fill it in because it was quite a visual gap most of the rest of the kit though um old lines and gap lines stuff are fine and like i said this is the trade-off you have from taking a resin kit as opposed to a plastic one but no lovely kit went together really nicely and here you see it in its finished unpainted form and then we'll crack on with the actual paint scheme so i started off with a black undercoat so just black spray and inconsistent across uh, and with all the paints i use in this i'll put them in the description down below so you can follow on exactly to what i've done or just take a bit of inspiration and, and see how i've painted it now the color scheme i'm using more closely matches the world war ii green that would be used on british vehicles um, but again given what i'm going to use it for in my bolt action army eventually i felt that was more appropriate because obviously they'd be painting it in 1940 but it is very similar to what you would use on a world war one tank in any case and again you do see a number of different color schemes um, that you see these vehicles in i'm going for the flat plain kind of green color scheme so here i'm using a very fat um, dry brushes and i'll be painting one but obviously there's other ones of these flat ended dry brushes becoming quite trendy now and it is more of a stippling effect over the entire model to lay that base coat down again not worrying if you leave little areas and little patches of black showing through because that'll help the shades and the highlights and things later on so stipple it over the entire model and you can see here for the second phase what i've done is i've taken that green i've mixed in a little bit of white in there just to lighten it up a bit it's an off-white i've mixed in and then a second stippling layer across the model but again with a very very dry brush as you would have seen so just a gentle stipple to add a few tones and highlights if you put too many severe ones on don't worry because some of the ink layers we'll do in later will cover that up now for the unit recognition kind of markings that they put on world war one and early world war ii british vehicles so again quite fitting the white and red stripes now really usefully you can see there on this tank you've got the rivet lines that will help you divide your white your red and your white stripe so again i'm just painting these on I'm trying to cover it completely but if you miss some sections it doesn't matter now the unditching beam on there the two facings the front and back facings of this kind of big beam are metal so metal on both sides and on the end caps and obviously the big feature of the vehicle is the tracks so um, brushing that in with that metal again not worrying so much if you leave some of the black showing through because we're going to do a lot of shades and highlights and dirtying up effects later on now interesting you'll notice i'm not painting i won't be painting the gun barrels or anything like that metal because they weren't they were painted so i'm not on that but i have painted the exhaust vent and stuff you can see running across the top of the, the tank there wood onto the unditching beam any kind of wood color is good but i would always if i'm doing an entire army you know whatever wood color i've used to paint the, the butts of the guns and things i would follow that over onto this so that's what i've used and then i'm taking a brass color now and just not fully painting dotting it on across areas of this exhaust system because i'm going to make it look slightly rusty and having now a two-tone effect of the metal and the brass on top will help with the rust effects later on so now we're going to move on to the intermediate kind of ink wash stage so most models i wouldn't put a glove on to do this stage but big model you're going to get it on your hands because you're having to hold the vehicle on which holding it from underneath so a bit of a glove just helps you stop and you get hands particularly messy using a, a vallejo sepia ink wash which is quite a dirty looking wash very appropriate for world war one battlefields but also into world war ii a particular favorite of mine we're not wanting to let it pool anywhere though we're not wanting real areas of kind of proper filth but um decent layer across the entirety of the model every last part and then um you'll see what we do uh, afterwards with this and this is why i said before don't worry if you over highlight anywhere and you go a bit bright on some of the highlights this will dull that down and again the next couple of layers um of when we do the next highlighting and things that's the slightly more important layer because you make mistakes at this stage it's a little bit harder to correct but still eminently doable you see when the ink has dried the effect that it gives so it is a bit streaky in places it is a bit um manky and dirty so what we're going to do now is take uh, a smaller flat headed dry brush than we've already used and now we're going to go back over all the areas we've been to with the same colors we've already done but this time we're not looking at hitting every patch on this model with your first layer of the green we've used what we're looking at doing is taking the, the streaky lines away from the flat panels again lots and lots of dabs on this we are doing we're sort of um 
you know we're stippling a little bit of dry brushing but we're, we're going again and again and again over the layers because there's very little paint on this brush we want to gradually take it away if you put too much paint on in one go you take away too much of it and you're effectively just putting the paint back on we want to have those sort of gradiated layers through the model to look like you know worn battered paint or paint's got a bit dirty on the battlefield or even just you know dust from driving on the the roads or whatever so build it up very gradually and you'll see the amount of times i've gone onto those panels now you can see the comparison between the panels on the right the panels on the left we are getting rid of those streaky areas but it does take a long time to build up now we're doing the same thing we did again we've taken our original color we've dropped a bit of an off-white color in there to brighten it up slightly and again very very little paint on the brush you can see virtually nothing's coming off onto that um, piece of paper at the side and just to add a couple of gentle tones on the top so that's the armor done you can see we've got away a lot of the streaks now now i'm going to work onto the unit markings and again a similar technique this is just a, a very old brush i've got i've cut the end off so it's a flat end and i'm just literally stippling on uh, and also dragging and dry brushing on at patches and the same off-white color we've used on those stripes but what i'm not trying to do again i'm not trying to wipe out all of the inked areas and all of the slightly uh, mucky effect areas that are in there i just want to get the streaks off and build up a bit of white gradually but leaving the ink and the sort of dirty patches underneath so you do have to really take your time on this um, don't rush to do this stage because you'll just ruin it and ruin the effect so you know you can see again on the piece of paper i've got there i've done one stripe but you see the amount of white that is now on that piece of paper i'm using so it does take a while to build this effect up you want virtually no paint on your brush as you're doing it and then now because i couldn't quite get right the way around the rivets with this effect because you would hit the green going in with a small brush and just painting in detail where we want but you can see left a lot of the shading and layer on there and a gradual build we'll do the same gradual build on the red but it's a little bit quicker because red's an easier color to layer back on but again doing the same process with a small brush just to finish off any details where the white may have crossed over onto the red and finishing that way now digging out a bit of rust wash again another vallejo product you don't have to do this stage you can get away without it but i find a little bit of this rust wash across the exhaust system works really well just to add a few layers so the basic painting is kind of done now we're dirtying it up so we're using a citadel sterling mud plenty of mud effect paints out there but this just puts a little bit of texture little bit of raised areas onto the model you can see on the tracks there we've only done the metal and the wash but there are two or three colors showing through here so this will add on a little bit of raised texture it'll also add on a uh, different sort of color in there now we've not gone crazy you've seen we put it just in little patches across the tracks now to give the proper dirt we're doing again the fat dry brush we're taking the um, dark brown color taking most of it off the brush again and very very gently going around the entire tank building up that coloration as you will see go gently go over it multiple times you know don't rush done the brown color then i've mixed a little bit of the bone color as you'll see there into the brown gone over it again then i'm using the pure bone color with a different brush you see there so it is the pure sort of off-white bone color using very very small amounts of it and damming it really delicately across the tank you'll see what i did to see if there was enough paint or not too much paint coming off i dabbed it on the paper first and then wasn't 100 sure so tested it on the underneath of the model and that's a good thing you can do just to think oh yeah too much paint is coming off here and you'll get used to it with practice and then that's putting that dirt layer across the tank there so three layers of very gentle dirt sort of mucking the vehicle up and we're back onto the finished shot so hopefully that gave you some ideas about how i've painted the tank hopefully you appreciate the ramble about the history behind the tank a little bit i did at the start there if you did like it look like comment subscribe all the youtube jazz and i will see you back on this channel soon hopefully thanks